higher. <coughs> hey. Hey. Cool, how is everyone doing tonight? <coughs> or today, whatever, whatever it is where you are. All right, I'm gonna do a test here and I apologize in advance. Like it, the volume should be what it normally is, but yeah. And I, again, apologize about last time. I had forgotten that I had jacked up the desktop audio volume way up. Arjuna, I, I co-run a game dev meetup here in Maine, and long story short, Chuck Carter of Mist fame has seen my My House map from the Wad Wednesday first anniversary set. Fantastic. I am very glad that you got to have that experience. That's cool. Are, any, are, are, are there any Mist devs that are, that are local to, uh, to your area, or was, uh, was he visiting... Because, yeah, I know that Cyan is, uh, Cyan is, is in this smaller town in Washington, right? And it's not especially close to, uh, to the Seattle area. Yeah. Anyway, that's cool. That's super cool. Hey, welcome, everybody. <clears throat> Well, yeah, cool. Let's get started. Welcome to Wad Wednesday. We're going to pick some random Doom levels and play them. Intermittent static on the mic. Uh, hmm. Not sure. I don't think there's any... I mean, I can twiddle some stuff, which will probably just produce more static. Uh, let me know if that persists. But, yeah, I don't think anything about my setup has changed. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Maine is the sort of place that I imagine one might move to after working on Mist. Cool. Yeah, I just like that, I don't know, something about the idea of people continuing to make Mist style games in 2019 is a comfort to me. <clears throat> Not that I know what they're working on or anything, but... Okay, cool. Uh, Alright, yeah, let's get started. What's first? JCM216, new graphics, sounds, levels, and music. Almost two megs. Almost two megs. And 200 plus hours of new things you've never seen for Doom. Spectacular visual, 200 plus hours, that's a, that's a lot. Uh, spectacular visual effects using new floor and wall images featuring mutated MIDI versions of the Technician Digital Dreaming CD. Soundtrack available on compact disc. Okay. If you enjoy JCM 1.wad, this will blow you away. Optimized for minimal slowdown. That's something you could put on a game nowadays that I think would probably go over well. Uh, all right, this is from December. Oh my gosh, this is... We are exactly 25 years in time from the date that this was uploaded, at the very least. Uh, that's... That's a heck of a thing. I would, man, okay, yeah. Yeah, what are, the, what are the odds? I mean, the odds are pretty decent that it's from 1994, but then, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, we're getting graphics, sounds, levels, and music. So this should just be an all-together experience here. Um, oh, jeez, yeah, okay, and there's a, there's a bigger readme. This is a thing people did sometimes. They would have a something something dot doc, which is not a Microsoft Word document extension. It's just document it's just a plain text thing that was yeah all right yeah and so yeah this seems like a big seems like an ambitious endeavor for collecting stuff here tty okay this is so this was specifically designed to be sent over a bbs and i suspect that maybe there's like some different ask characters that we would be seeing here wow okay and, there's, and then there's a readme for the music i guess Damn, okay. Yeah, original MIDI tracks. In the style of Tangerine Dream, Harold Faltermeyer from Beverly Hills, of Beverly Hills Cop fame. 
It's not wrap or scratch. I don't know what that necessarily means. Uh, okay, wow, yeah, so there's just a whole... All right, let's, let's get into it. JCM216. And it looks like it's an episode two replacement. Oh, look at that. Custom. Custom add-on episode for the great game by id. Fantastic. And just like some color shifts going on here. All right. Oop. Okay, the backing out of menu sound sounds like it could be like one of the original Star Trek original sounds. All right. Yeah, cool. JCM episode 2. All right, we're, we're definitely getting some Beavis and Butthead style samples here. Gonna get you. I think I think that's what they're saying. I think these demons are saying gonna get you. All right, we got some. Let me cross here. Go. There we go. This is uh, this is a highly comedic effect happening here. Oh, hello, cacos. All right, so we're in a trapezoidal room with some cacos. Just all of these are just comedy waves. Hilarious. Game audio is quiet. All right, maybe I should uh, save here and I guess let's just mix this up a little bit. All right, hopefully this is not blowing out y'all speakers because I definitely want y'all to be able to experience the audio joys that I am. All right. That didn't hurt. All right. All right. Let me know if that's if that's any better. Okay. And this is yeah. Figured that one of these was a lift, but. All right. We're down to two health here. So that's. Bit of an unfortunate situation. There we go. I want all of the health that you can give me. <laughs> Is that Otto from uh, The Simpsons? I think it might be. Yeah, there's just graffiti. There's just Thailand graffiti of the author's name on the wall quite an artifact here. I dig the, the wildness of this uh, skybox. It almost feels like one of the original Doom skyboxes, but kind of glitched or something. <laughs> oh, lordy. Yep. It's definitely a certain... This is definitely in a certain genre of, of Doom wad. Coming at the tail end of 1994. Kind of like this little pickup and sound. It's kind of happy. All right. Oh, okay. This is coming down. <laughs> oh, lordy. <clears throat> All right, so the actual level design here is not super exciting, but let's have a look at the layout here. Oh, okay. All right, so you lose. You lose. What's going on here? All right, oh, we've teleported into some sort of unusually shaped room. Oh man, I ran the uh, I ran the little 
the little command that is supposed to uh, that's supposed to prevent the launcher thing from happening. But uh, hold on, let me get to a stopping point here. All right. Um. Yeah. All right. So let's. Uh, <coughs> Force full composition pipeline. Yeah, that's supposed to be on. Huh. Yeah, like that's on. So I don't know. I don't know what's that was supposed to be the setting to make it work. I don't know. I mean, this might be an additional issue with uh, OBS or or something. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me just let me do the let me do the known best practice of minimizing it. <clears throat> okay. All right. Hopefully. Okay. Uh, and yeah. What is this wacky little room that we're in here? Yeah, it's like a combination of what sounds like the developer just on their microphone, on their home 1994 computer microphone. Also some Simpsons stuff. You know, I don't think Alt-Enter does toggle full screen. Yeah, and that might just be a bind that I need to set up or something. It does kind of look like crazy bread. Uh, wait, is this, have I already been in here? Oh, I need the red key. Okay, so yeah, we're in just this wacky maze here. Uh, what's down this way? Aha, there we go, there's a red key. Yeah, and it seems like the author's just kind of having a little fun with like these little wobbly walls here. So, okay, I, refresh my memory. Is crazy bread just what Little Caesars calls its, like, breadstick type item? Yeah, okay, all right, yeah, man. It, is, it has been decades, many decades since I have eaten Little Caesars pizza, I think. Yeah. My main reference point for crazy bread is uh, there's one MST3K episode where... There's the Monos the Hands of Fate episode, which, you know, introduces Torgo and is kind of a famous one. And then, like, a few episodes later, or next season or something, Torgo shows up and delivers the Mads some pizza. And Torgo says something like, or like he's taking their pizza order or something. Anyway, Torgo says, would you like crazy bread? And it was, <laughs> I don't know, that just, that, that's what, that, that little fragment of, comedy from 1994 or 5 probably just lodged itself in my brain permanently um oh and now we're back here okay so yeah that was like our whole little red key quest here but, but why the heck did we do all of that He delivers pizza at the end of Monos, and then in a later episode, he's back with the crazy bread or soda or whatever. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just Torgo talking about crazy bread. <laughs> it's. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> this is. Oh, look at that. What are you doing here? Yeah, alright. So, like. Okay, I've got. Oh yeah, look at that. We've got a custom, uh, got a custom HUD going on here. Uh, um, yeah. What am I missing here? Hmm. All right. Well. Oh yeah, MST three K isn't getting, isn't getting. Oh geez. Okay. All right. All right. 
How rude. Yeah, Netflix uh, supposedly canceling stuff after its second season, just kind of no matter, just as a policy. It's, uh, <laughs> Not as iconic, but there's a line from Final Sacrifice where Mike riffs as Troy eats cold, crazy bread. Mm, it really is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I do remember Final Sacrifice. Man. Talking about MSC3K while running around Doom levels with no monsters or enemies. Um, or whatever whatever the, the mic line was. This is like Doom with no monsters or opponents. Uh, Alright. Sorry, I'm going to try to keep this moving along here. Um... Yeah, this level, I mean, this is an interesting area. It's a little too monotonous, you know, I would say, to be actually interesting to explore. What about through here? Can I, like... Oh, oh, look at that. Well, that was just a... Okay. I should have stepped into the letter teleporter thing. Yeah, I feel like I'm hearing... Some, some croty robot and so forth. These were just the these were the things that nerds who made Doom maps in 1994 cared about and had access to wave files of. Clearly, <laughs> that was like a Homer and Lisa combo. Yeah, this has got to be. See, I I always. <laughs> I'm always keenly aware, I mean, first of all, just by virtue of the fact that... Oh, look at that. <laughs> that, that this, was a, this was an above-average fake out here. I just, like, turned the corner and was like, oh. Uh, yeah, what's going on here? Okay, that's a door. It's just a monster-textured door. Wild. <laughs> yeah, they, they totally got me. You know what? I'm going to go the long way around here and... Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there definitely were. If you had a sound card with like a line in on it, 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 was, it would definitely be possible. You know, if you had that hooked up to your, you know, because I mean, quality, sound quality was not, you know, standards weren't, definitely were not, you know, just hearing any digitized sound or speech on a computer in 1994 was still kind of mind blowing. It's dark. And yeah, I, I imagine, you know, if you had the right kind of setup, and, and a lot of times, you know, like one person with a decent digitizing setup could do like a bunch of waves and then put them up on the internet somewhere or on CompuServe or Usenet or wherever people were trading files. And then, you know, like hundreds of people would download that. And that's generally how these things disseminate it. Yeah, I mean, I think people did, like... I mean, it definitely would have been analog to analog, you know, and then into your sound card. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so this was another basically maze-type thing. Not too exciting, honestly, but... And then, yeah, there's, like, this... Uh, I keep hearing these monsters. Where... You is it just somebody saying you lose? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and there was a Kako in there guarding it, but like this is so congested that like I sort of backed off of it and then got turned around. So yeah, we're definitely falling afoul of like all the th problems with mazes. Okay, this is a little, little monster, monster nook. A monster breakfast nook. And yeah, here we have the not putting wall textures or like upper or lower textures on something that is higher than the floor around it. Um, so you get this cool sort of, and this, it basically looks like this in Vanilla Doom, if I recall, because this effect, uh, a flipped version of this, of this effect with the thing on the ceiling is what was used, I believe, for uh, at the end of Map 25, of Doom 2 Map 25 Blood Falls, right? So... Yeah, just a weird little bit of tr engine trickery. Okay, so now I have the blue key. 
And I'm gonna head back out here. Gotta get ya. Yeah, it's a rat effect. It's 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 a it's a case of the engine like failing relatively gracefully and producing, you know, kind of a cool just an effect that has its own aesthetic effect. So yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, the mod to toggle original graphics. Yeah, uh vanilla essence. Oh wait, what? Oh, do I not have uh, Vanilla Essence loaded? <laughs> this is just my log of the of the entire playthrough. Um, oh yeah, I guess Vanilla Essence is not in my auto loads. That's a bummer. Um, yeah. But this level is really going on for a ways. Like. Yeah, just the, yeah, these sound clips. Uh, all right, yeah, yeah. This level is those maze bits are surprisingly time-consuming to fully plumb. All right, so like, okay, yeah, maybe there's like another. Okay, eat my shorts. I think the winner from this really is the uh, really is this little pickup sound. Okay, so that was that was that. Oh, I see. Okay, so this is the, the whole thing in the middle. All right. So I feel like I should be getting towards the end here, right? Who's shooting at me? Yeah, where did these where did these cacos come from? Did they pop out of here? No. That didn't hurt. <laughs> that didn't hurt. All right. Yeah, like just what's the what's the way forward here? Like I see this yellow door back there. Oh, maybe something's opened up back in back out here. What's going on in here? Oh, okay, yeah, see this opened up. Now we get the chain gun. That is cool. I hear a new creature. All right, so we got some more, got some pinkies. Now we can open up this, and that is it for that level. And oh yeah, look at that, they, uh, they custom made I custom made some uh, some map title graphics. The Outlands. And now we're entering the Jump Factor. Oh man, this isn't Canyon Mid, is it? No, it's not. It's got a similar kind of energy. Oh my gosh, what is this? I believe I believe that that voice clip is saying that didn't hurt. Yeah. All right. Oh, what's going on here? Did we not get the red key. What's up? There's just like invisible junk blocking us. The least good kind of junk. All right, secret room with some troopers and a stim pack. It's an unusual secret. Ooh, look at that blue switch. All right, I'm like, can we get at this? Nope. Tricky. 
This actually kind of reminds me of like a marathon level almost. Some sort of midi tastic thing. Alright, how do I get back up here? Okay, yeah, right. There's this. And then. Oh man, what's the deal? Like, why. Why can I not just get this thing? Okay, there's the blue key. He's really teasing us with these keys here. It really seems like we should just be able to scoop them up, but... That didn't hurt. That didn't hurt. That didn't hurt. Oh, jeez. That didn't hurt. That didn't hurt. Alright. Uh, well, this is the one place that I haven't gone to yet, so... Just doesn't let the yeah the custom waves just don't let up. Oh man, I don't have to crawl through this nukage. Yeah, there is some sort of I think one of the imps' aggro noises is a fart sound. So you just kind of hear it off in the distance sometimes. Oh geez. Well that that's pretty rude. Ooh, look at that. Arm safe. What is this? What's that doing exactly? Alright, that's the way back up. Where'd you come from? through this junk. Oh my goodness. Oh my. This is some sort of strange area that we're going into. Wish the, uh, I kind of wish the uh, the Lisa Simpson going "you" sound was a uh, was on jibbing, because that's the most "you" thing that happens in Doom, by far. Okay, yeah, wow, this is quite a vast area here, and yeah, like what. What did we gain by going through all of this? Yeah, that in, yeah that Enviro suit was it was like I grabbed it and then like I mean I guess I could go yeah okay it's totally useless. All right. Is there anything back here that can help me? Oh jeez. Corridors. There's just not much to them. It sort of feels like there should be more here, but there's not. Yeah. 
I mean, this isn't a bad... Yeah, this is like... this. There's a concept here, you know, in this room. There's like these three roots, and then they're not symmetrical, and there's some near and far interest stuff and all that, but yeah, it's just not... Alright, well... I'm just going to run back this way, because I don't... Hmm, okay, no change there. Yeah, this is a bit of a puzzle. Um, not the... Uh, Maybe not the intentional kind either. All right, yeah, and I don't have the yellow, I don't have the red key. So like, yeah, what am I missing from these other areas? Yeah, like coming off these things, there's like these, I, I you know, I guess I could, uh, I could try to get, get back on here. And then, yeah, let's try going back here. See, th this, I don't even know if this is, like, just a bug or something. Um, <clears throat> let me use cheat codes here. Okay, yeah, that is, like, an impassable line sort of thing. So, I think I am meant to, uh, yeah, maybe to, like, run around from the... Okay, so it's right there. Yeah, and I guess I could, uh... Okay, and if it's right here... Aha! Okay, alright. Now we've got the red key. Yeah, now, now we're cooking with gas. Alright. Dup. Owned. Okay, but now I think maybe we can get the key on the opposite side here, which is this. Yes, okay, and now we can get the, and yeah, and so now where was, is there a blue key door that we ran into? I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, that's just a teleport trigger, right? Hmm. Okay, well, nope, that's not what I meant to do. Yeah, this is baffling. I mean, this level definitely has a has a concept. It's just, uh, it's just pretty opaque. I feel like I'm solving this level, you know? It's one of those levels that you solve rather than play through. Did I get up on any of this stuff? Yeah, then I heard something come, like... Okay, no, that's not, a, that's not a real thing. Yeah, and then, like... I'm pretty sure I've seen everything there is to see on this whole path. Unless something opened up, which would be, you know, not cool. Okay, well, there's one thing I can think to go back and do. Oh, well, yeah, that's is this just a little secret. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and grab these additional things right here. Yeah, looks like this might just be chain gun, but nope, not even that. Just a wall. All right, and then this one we haven't... Aha! Cool, all right, so that's the yellow key, and I think now we're in business. Oh, 
Oh dear. A lot of fireballs. A lot of monster balls heading our way. Sounds at least continue to provide entertainment. Oh, look at that. Imp switch. Oh my gosh, this is getting weird. This is getting pretty weird. We got like soul sphere wall things. What is happening? It's just a nice simple like deluxe paint gradient sort of sort of texture jobby. I do dig this. Uh, I do dig this. This strange blue soul sphere texture. It's kind of like this richness. These specific kinds of like just tight linear gradients, you know, like with like one pixel for each color. I I actually associate that a lot with Jill of the Jungle. I don't know why. I mean, it that that is that is a you know Jill of the Jungle was definitely like a relatively early VGA DOS game. So I think it was looking to like really show off all 256 of its colors. And yeah, it kind of seems like a similar thing here. You know, like I, yeah, like making textures for a Doom level, you're like, man, I have, after, after years of playing with like EGA graphics, like, you know, being able to suddenly go from 16 to 256 colors, that is, that is wild. Um, hold on here. I don't know why my... <clears throat> uh, no, I did not work on the original Psychonauts. Nope, that is, that is way before my time. I mean, I was in the industry, I was in the games industry. I guess I was working at Blue Fang when Psychonauts came out. And yeah, I think I mail ordered a copy and played it at my home in Boston, which I am many, many years from. All right, cool. Well, yeah, I think we've done, yeah, there's like, this This level actually feels like it has more explorable space to it. But yeah, this actually, you know, I was maybe thinking like gonging out of this, out of this, out of this wad, uh, if the first, if, if this level had been as kind of boring and straightforward or just maze dependent as, uh, as the first one. But no, I mean this is this is sort of weird and and interesting. Yeah, I mean it, you know this type of this level design almost in a way it almost feels like a ZZT sort of level. You know, I mean a it's like pretty rectilinear. You know, it's just got lots of right angles, and yeah, just the way that you like the way that spaces progress. Oh yeah, what's up with that? Can I actually like get up here. Okay, that's the actual exit. So like, yeah, okay, so that's the exit switch. But then right on the other side of it, it looks like there's this kind of lift. Yeah, that doesn't take you up. Okay, but maybe if we get up here, how do we get up there? All right. Hmm. Oh, oh, okay. So this is just where I hit that switch and stuff. Okay, yeah. So I'm not missing anything there. I had already forgotten that that's what I did. Oh, and look at this. Yeah, it's like another green gradient texture with like the 
the monster ball. All right. Cool, okay, well yeah, that was episode, and this is, wait, I've missed the title of this one. the I missed the title from the from the map screen. Alright, let's see what's let's see what this has in store for us here. Got Homer Simpson and Crow T robot. Oh yeah, I don't think I finished my thought from from earlier. I'm definitely aware that there's like this generational rut that a lot of this stuff is in you know like we're hearing simpsons stuff which obviously the simpsons is still going today but a lot of the you know a huge majority of the stuff that people when people quote the simpsons or something or just reference something from it it's from the 90s it's from that that you know that season two through or just you know yeah like that that golden age uh from the 90s and then, yeah, we've got MSC3K and, you know, and then just just that sort of 90s brand of, like, edgy humor of somebody saying, like, it sucks. You know, like, it's just, you know, and then we're playing a Doom level with those things in it. So I really feel like, you know, some of the people watching the stream were probably born well after any of this crap. <laughs> had come and gone you know so i never know what that's like because you know i lived through it you know i was i was a i was a, a teen in the 90s so you know for me it's just like oh yeah I'm, I'm back in my familiar being a nerd in junior high and high school turf yeah and that's a good point simpsons embodies 90s sensibilities it, yeah it totally does i mean it's a it's a it's a quintessential show of that era so anyway i'm sorry if you know like i'm <laughs> whatever the equivalent for like gen x slash early millennial is whatever the okay boomer equivalent is for that you know if you're just like totally sick of you know us old fogies in here just constantly being like oh yeah and when this mst3k thing happened that was so great you know I would hope that, you know, I I actually really, you know, I'm pretty down on, on the sort of generational divide rage bait sort of thing, you know, where like a whole bunch of like older guard media people write a few articles about how millennials aren't doing something or millennials are killing blah. And it is just like, you know, I mean, it's basically just sort of a slightly a barely encrypted form of like class trash you know where it's like oh yeah this generation that has less money from us what's all this weird stuff that they're into you know so i'm totally down on that stuff obviously you know and i think honestly the divides between you know younger generations from gen x to millennials to gen z or and so on you know i think I think we're all kind of in the same boat for the most part. I mean, I don't know if, if if you're Gen X and you got rich, you know, doing something at the at the tail end of the dot com era or something, then good for you, screw you slash good for you, I guess. But you know, a lot of us are in kind of the same boat um, of like generational wealth transfer did not happen and. Yeah, you know, and, and pop we live in this kind of pop culture, like, garbage heap of just so many eras of things stacked atop one another and reconstituted into into memes. And, um, you know, and that'll, that actually all sounds pretty dystopic, and some of it for sure is, but, like, I don't know. I am happy to revel in that garbage heap and be like, yeah... Everybody's got their little generational touchstones, and when I find out about something that was, like, after my time, I generally want to learn about it, you know? I want to, like, know what the... And this, God, this... It's impossible for me to sound not 
completely old and out of touch, but I want to know what the kids are talking about, you know? I think, because, yeah, I think once you close yourself off to that sort of stuff, you know, you're sort of on the path to becoming, you know, an old person that just everybody else doesn't like, you know, and just isn't, you know, yeah. And that I'm, I'm definitely not up on a lot of current pop culture stuff, you know. I've never played Fortnite, uh, but, you know, like... I think I think the knee-jerk dismissal of that stuff I think is like very problematic. You know, it's more like let let younger generations have their own touchstones, even if they don't make a lick of sense to you, and like invite other folks into your own generational <laughs> gar wing of the garb of the same giant garbage heap. And that, I mean, that's honestly kind of what Wad Wednesday is about. It's like, hey. Hey, person who's like 22 or something, and so was you know not alive when Doom came out. Uh, this is a weird old thing that some of us love, and you can make maps for it. And if you make a map for it, I will play it, and that's cool. And yeah, like you might recognize some of this random garbage from your wing of the garbage heap. I don't know, yeah. My, my thoughts are very... Are, I'm not being super, super articulate. No, see, yeah. I don't... I want the kids to come and frolic in the garbage heap because we're all responsible for it. And it's better that we... And we better start learning to share the garbage as sea levels rise and, you know, etc. Yeah, to be clear, I am definitely Steve Buscemi with the skateboard, you know, saying, how do you do fellow teens? Um, except, yeah, I'm taking the I'm taking the being old thing just right on the chin. Interesting point, Cheese. Uh, culturally, I don't think we've really had time to come to terms with what it means for people to live more than 40, 50 years. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. I mean, yeah. You know, just like the, the age demographics of society, like changing so much... You know, I, I think it, yeah, it's it's having profound effects, and you know, we better learn, we better learn to like manage these kinds of transitions gracefully, you know, and with some with some compassion, uh, but also stick by our principles. So yeah, wow, this is just a big maze, which kind of explains why I've been just sort of drunk esque inly wandering around it. Uh, I kind of like the little light gradients here, but I have no idea where to go. Like, it's just a total mystery to me. Yeah. All right, like, let's... Oh, oh, yeah, look at this. It's a little switch. What did that do? All I know is I hit switches. This opens something up. Oh, wait, look. There's a, there's a corridor down this way. Yep, it's probably another big room with monsters in it. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh my gosh. Yeah, see, I feel like I should have... I feel like it would, it would have been nice to have had the plasma a long time ago. All right. Oh! You never know if this is going to be a teleport or just, like, a little light thing. In this case, it was a teleport. You lose! It's just... It's the most random thing for a monster to say as it dies. Icarumba, all right. Got some Bart Simpson troopers here. Few phrases are as pure, have as pure a 90s energy to me as Icarumba. I mean, I'm aware that it's just an exclamation, but, you know, as popularized by Bart Simpson. Oh man, I didn't mean to do that. All right. Yeah, I think yeah, I think Doom guy is speaking with Bart Simpson's voice and being like Icaramba. Alright. Oh my 
Gosh, okay, yeah. Just a whole nukage maze situation here. This actually feels very Wolfenstein-like. This is the sort of thing that, like, if somebody somebody had been making Wolfenstein 3D levels and then you told them about Doom's engine, they would make something like this at first and be like, oh my gosh, yeah, I can have, like, I can actually make a sewer level that kind of feels like a sewer by having, you know, different floor textures and all that kind of stuff. All right. Oh my gosh, more little mini mazes. There are people who are 105 years old who were around before World War I. If we pretend that people can't contribute to culture once they're over 50, that cuts us off from a lot of valid and valuable influence, but also isolates a huge amount of people for a huge amount of time. Yeah, I agree, yeah. Yeah, and like, you know, I, I think that, I think that sentiment is totally compatible with not downplaying very real forms of like generational economic antagonism and stuff. You know, I mean, I think A, you need to take it like case by case and acknowledge that people, you know, I mean, I think one of the things that infuriates a lot of people very right, very understandably about like millennials, blah, 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 or whatever is, um, is, is the generalization, you know, because you're generalizing about an, an, an unfathomably gigantic group of people and saying like, oh, they do this or something. And it's like, come on, like, you know, you know, you can't draw that kind of a line around that that group of people. You know. Um, all right, cool. We got like a yeah, like a badass lightning strike. Digitized light. This is actually making me think that um, this author did in fact create a lot of these textures and maybe like scanned this picture or something. And then I don't know. Yeah, like the, the readme sort of suggested that like you know. This was all their content. And aside from the, the MIDI tracks that are just straight up covers. But even then, you know, might have been like a... I have no idea what the state of, like, people doing MIDI arrangements of songs in 1994 was, you know? Oh, man, look at these... Look at this, like, purple confetti sort of weirdness. Kind of just gets stranger and stranger. Yep. <laughs> just a little imp popping up. I mean, nowadays, like, if you release something that did this kind of stuff nowadays, it would be like this. It would be a very deliberate, like, kind of throwback, like a wacky comedy throwback thing. Whereas I don't necessarily know if it's. I don't know. I mean, this probably is. You know, this 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 wad definitely has like a comedic intent to it but with all the Simpsons stuff and just sort of funny voices and whatever. But, um... Oh, my goodness. Okay. Here's the plasma, and... who oh boy. Okay, yeah. There's a lot going on here. All right. I'm gonna let these fools in fight. Oh, and look at this. There's like, yeah, we're like in an arena here. Absolutely, some sort of battle arena. All right. Okay. And then yeah, we've got all these dorks around the edges here. So, we'll deal with them. This wad is above average in the custom texture depth for a 94 wad. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, so how do we get out of here? Oh. No, oh, these are just like little secret goodies. <laughs> now that is... 
Now that, this is a 1994 floor and ceiling texturing decision happening right here for sure. The uh, goat head pentagram floor thing is is done up as you know it because it's larger than 64 by 64. It had to be done up into like four separate tiles. So this is just like tiling all of you know that same piece, that lower right piece, just again and again and again over a pretty large area, which is uh, it's a choice. It's a creative choice. Oh, the lightning had a 92 signature on it. That's a good, good spot. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe this author already had like a bunch of like digital pictures and stuff, because certainly people would have been collecting that kind of stuff from from way further back. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. 92. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This just goes on and on in every direction. This is actually a pretty cool structure here. It actually has the feeling, like, even though this is a low contrast enough texture, that you look at it and it almost feels like it's defeating Doom's, like, floors upon floors limitation. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's just a weird, just kind of abstract shape, I guess, but... Yeah, this music is fairly pleasant, honestly. It's... It does not offend me. All right, yeah, now we're back outside of Thunderdome here. Aha, okay. Oh yeah, and this just takes us into here. Yep, we're already battling here. Let's get these battles. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I you know, this is more interesting. This this map set is more interesting than it seems at first glance. Maybe I don't want to I don't want to overplay it too much, but yeah. Hmm. It'd be interesting to just, like, try to deliberately create an experience like this. Oh, look at that. Whoa, that is... That is pretty cool, honestly. Yeah, all right, so we've got, like, an invulnerability here that I didn't mean to get, but I've got it now. And, yeah, it's, like, these little, like, gate textures. That's super weird. Okay. Um, oh, all right. Fell down real far. Okay, so I can see into this area. Yeah, what's going on here? This is getting kind of a little more deliberate with its choices and stuff. Um, all right. Well, it's getting it's getting close to the hour mark, so I think I'm going to maybe try to finish this level and then and then call it. Yeah, we made it to E2 and 4, so... Yeah, like... That texture wasn't scrolling before. No, th there were definitely not source ports around. Doom was open sourced initially in 97. Uh, so yeah, like, this it was vanilla or nothing with a lot of this stuff. Um, yeah, alright, so... Interesting. Okay, so maybe this is... Alright, yeah. We're going here. And what about this? There's those fart nymphs again. Need that red key. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, look at this purple light. It's so bold. Doom only has like a few shades of purple total in its uh, palette. Oh, wow, okay, and now we're here. Yeah, that's kind of a trip. Oh, and now we're on the other side of this. Okay. Yeah, so we really want to get that red key, huh? Yeah, and then, like, what about... Oh, okay, yeah. That might just be a secret. <laughs> Such a fake-out texture. Oh, okay, yeah. Now we found the third letter room. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, and then all of this junk connects this stuff. I recently wrote a small script to check how many times purple is used in Doom. The bright magenta color is not used anywhere. Interesting. Uh, did we end up exploring the room to the north of the initial spawn room? It opened briefly, but closed again. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Is this the way? Okay, yeah, that opens that up. And then does this open? No. Huh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, and we didn't get the red key there, but... Oh, oh, okay, look at that. Uh, okay, let's just let this in this little cage here. And then... like TV static almost. Yep, we've been here. Yeah, and I'll bet I'll bet we can get into the the other side of that of that little room. I don't I don't know why we would want to do that, but Yeah, so like let's deal with the red key. Where do we where do we find it? actually the way forward, but it is a previously unvisited area. Okay, yeah, now we're on the other side of this. But do we care? Oh, yeah, okay, we're on yet another side of this. Okay. And then, yeah, okay. Now we have been just on all sides of that weird teleporter or uh, invincibility room thing. Okay, so, and yeah, there's only seven monsters left in the level. I don't have those keys. Yeah, like, did, did I just, like, miss something here? I'll bet I missed something. Oh, wow, all right. Is the Soul Sphere. Oh, okay, all right. So we got a Crit Path Secret here, Red Key, and Soul Spheres. It's just, this is what this room is about. Enjoy some Soul Spheres. Boom, boom. All right. Way to just dump all the candy on me all at once. Weird. So weird. Very strange choices. 
Uh, let's see. Let's go here. And it's going to have a blue key. Yep, there it is. Oh, and look at this. It's like a screen showing like a galaxy or something. Or a mysterious eye. Alright. Now we can go back here. This texture really is the gift that keeps on giving. Okay. Well, yeah. That sure was a thing. That was the cage. Yeah, that I, I can definitely see. And this is Stronghold. All right, well, I'm going to call it there. Although I am going to just admire this lovely, like, sector work here. Because spelling out your initials with on the on a wall rather than on a floor takes some real doing. Uh, yeah, cool. All right, well, yeah, I think I'm going to call it with that. And that, that is our one level for the night. Yeah, it just I just found it engrossing enough that, yeah, I just, I wasn't expecting this to be as interesting as it was, but yeah, that was JCM216 by JCM. Did we, like, actually get an author name there or something, or? Try these great BBSs. LA Connection. Are these, like, California area. JCM Digital Imaging. P.O. Box 1953, Santa Clarita, California. Okay. Is Santa Clarita up in up up in up here in the, the north part of the state, or is that is Santa Santa Clarita down in down towards LA? Um Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's possible that this person that the author of this, like yeah, JCM digital imaging yeah, I don't know. I mean, they've got they've got like this whole thing going on, and then like Doom, the Doom levels are just sort of a part of that. Of course, the CD sounds much better than the FM ad lib soundtrack. Well, cool. Uh, yeah, this was an interesting little nugget of history from exactly twenty five years in the past, or at least that's when this was uploaded. I want to say. So yeah, and yeah, and I guess like installing these. Uh, these like custom graphics probably was way more of a pain back in the day. Yeah. Cool. Patchwad for Doom 2. Yeah, this was neat. I mean, just, yeah, I had no idea what to expect, really. JC Megabyte. All right, I'm going to remember that name because that's, that's a heck of a handle. JC Megabyte. Stepping Stone Hotel BBS. Well, cool. Uh, that was interesting and just... An interesting little bit of 1994 there. Thank you uh, for joining me as always. Uh, and yeah, I'll see y'all next week. I hope y'all have a good week. And yeah, if y'all play through the rest of this or anything or dig further into it, then, uh, then yeah, let me know in the description. But yeah, have a good one, folks. Bye.